Hi, we're at the 16th Horasis India Meet, proudly brought to you by the Hellenic Indian Chamber of Commerce and Economy. And I have the pleasure of sitting with Preeti Upala. Welcome, Preeti. Namaste. 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 <laughs> Namaste. The director of Omnia Institute, but more than that, she's also a TV uh, media personality and has an absolutely illustrious career and given us some great insights today at your panel, also about the geopolitical landscape in this ever-changing world. Thank you so much, Preeti. Such a pleasure. Uh, having you Thank here. Thank you for inviting me. It's always wonderful to have these amazing conversations. Fantastic. How have you enjoyed Athens? Let's start with that. I This is not my first time. I've okay. been several times to, to Greece. Usually I spend more time in the Greek islands, which yes. I love, which I will yes. be heading off to. Fantastic. But um, this is the first time I'm spending more time in Athens itself. Right. And I really feel a spiritual connection. Amazing. I think every Indian does. Right. From a, yes. On a deeper sort of soul level, they feel it very much at home here, yeah. even more than other European countries, I would say, for sure. And would you say in a time of so much geopolitical uncertainty, that feeling of feeling grounded, because I love that word that you use, you feel at home, even though you're far away, you feel at home. How important is that? I think we are at a very divisive and polarized time. Sure. And it's amazing that during these times, India and Greece, the, possibly the two greatest civilizations yeah. in history, are coming together to celebrate each other and I think reintroduce themselves to one another. Yes, reintroduce, that's such a yes. beautiful word, reintroduce. And I think they both hold the key mm -hmm. to whether it's peace in the region, um, conflict resolution, uh, bringing the world together, being a bridge very much between, I think I see Greece as a, the perfect interlocutor. It's the yeah. gateway to Europe. It's also... I love that. The gateway to Europe. To Europe. Yes. I think it connects Asia and Europe. Mm -hmm. Now, India, on the other hand, is a bridge between the global south and the global north. Mm -hmm. And they both actually are gatekeepers of the most important water bodies in the world, yeah. the Mediterranean Ocean mm -hmm. and the Indian Ocean. Yes. So when you combine all of these, these are like the two... That's magic waiting to happen. The geopolitical <laughs> vortexes, I think. Yes. And I've always said this, that I think Europe should have at the very cornerstone of its foreign policy, deep strengthened ties with India. Mm -hmm. It's not always been the case, but I think yeah. now is the time. And I think at the heart of that European foreign policy, mm. Um, is really the, I think Greece sits at, at, right. at the heart of that. Yeah. It has the best. At the cusp of it. Absolutely. Yes. It has the best potential to be that interlocutor. Yeah. Um, and such a, because of its own deep civilizational connect with India, yes. you know, spanning probably 3,000 odd years plus. Yes. And uh, it's not just the government, but it's people, it's businesses, it's food, it's uh, movies. Culture, I mean, yes. People have the, the big fat. Greek weddings. Well, we have the big the fat Indian, Indian weddings. weddings you know? Absolutely, and it would be <laughs> nice to see both having weddings in each other's uh, countries, which I think is coming. Yeah, fantastic. Uh -huh. And tell me, you know, I I really like what you said about Greece being almost a, a, like a stepping stone, an entry point for India into Europe. Apart from, you know, of course, uh, the, 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 the position the, the, with the ocean and, and everything. Mm. Tell me a little bit more on. Why else? Is it because, and you know, you mentioned culture as well, is it also because how important is the role of the fact that it's actually fairly affordable? You know, if you look at France or if you look at the UK, if you want to try something out, it's quite a bit of an expensive endeavor. Do you think that the cost plays a bit of a role as well? It should be the most attractive destination yeah. for Indian tourists. It really should be. Yeah. And during the summit, what I've noticed speaking to tons of both Greeks mm -hmm. as well as Indians is the only reason why both are not visiting each other's countries as much is simply because there are no direct flights. Okay, that's a shout out to Air India. Absolutely. And <laughs> I think yeah. the national carriers Air India and the Aegean Airways, yeah. by the way, both part of Star Alliance, both part of the same alliance group. Fantastic. I yes. think there is nothing stopping them from having some kind of strategic partnership yeah. and filling that void of the direct flights. I think yeah. only 
they can fill it. Yes. And I think it would do wonders for both on every level. Yeah. I love that. So tourism is definitely one area. What is you know what have been your takeaways in the last few days? Are there any other areas of partnership that you see uh, politically, of course? Um, that any other areas of partnerships or industries that you think this uh, the Greek Indian partnership could work quite well? Absolutely. So you have I think other than the geopolitical realities of the day, of I think security issues, mm -hmm. which includes counterterrorism, right. cyber security, sure. and of course AI. Yeah. And um, I'm going to actually quote the Honorable Prime Minister of Greece, uh, Mitsokakis, who n recently said in India, he said, um, you know, the he quoted a, a, a scripture, Vasudeva mm -hmm. Kutumbukam, which is mm -hmm. the famous Hindu scripture that says all the world is one big family, which is so true. Mm, amazing. And yeah. he said that th the Sanskrit wisdom holds loud and true today more than ever. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, sort of uh, moving, adding to that, he said, ancient civilizations like the Greek and the Indian mm. have always had dialogue and discussion and a cross-fertilization of ideas. Yes. But so apart from just the AI, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. there is another inherent AI, ancestral intelligence. Oh, I like which that. Spans oh, from I love that. That's the first time I've heard Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm going to start quoting it, I oh, think, totally. because it's really Yeah, yeah you got you to trademark that one. But it's, it's good. so good. <laughs> and so it's like the, when you have a thousand year plus civilizational history yes. to draw from, which both of these countries have, um, you can learn from each other, you can teach each other, but I think more importantly, they can be leveraged globally for the greater good yes. of the world, which I don't think we've seen yet. And I think India certainly should be doing this uh, independently. Yeah. But I think we have a, a power center in Europe, Greece, Greece. that yeah. is actually very capable of doing this more than any, because they are so ancient and they, have, and they have it. I think they're so yeah. proud. So deep rooted, so grounded. So I think we see the uh, ancestral intelligence coming into play. And I think both countries hold the key yes. really to a better future, a better peace, a brave new world, as I like to say. So I'm very excited that Absolutely. we're at the Absolutely fantastic. Of and your new terminology for yes. AI. I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in love with that. Thank you so much, Preeti. That was really wonderful. Such a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you for the opportunity. Thank you.